we can draw encouragement from the fact that governments, the United Nations, international organizations, and civil society are now increasingly focused on all aspects of migration. In the United Nations and throughout the international development community, growing attention is devoted to research, studies, projects, and programs on migration and development. And we thank His Excellency Secretary General Ban Ki-moon for recounting some of them. Of course, more remains to be done, but this is a good start. The Philippines stands ready to champion the cause of migrant workers. We have established what is considered one of the best regulated expatriate worker programs in the world. On the basis of their contributions and of the nation's humanitarian responsibilities to its people wherever they are, our government works doubly hard to strengthen migrant workers' protection, protection from the depredations of domestic recruiters, as well as of overseas employers, agents, and officials, and protection from physical harm. Our comprehensive and multidimensional life cycle strategy covers all facets of the overseas employment process, from pre-departure orientation to post-return reintegration and retraining. The effectiveness of this approach in terms of protecting workers has been repeatedly acknowledged by international bodies. However, the full protection and empowerment of migrants is a task that goes far beyond what individual countries of origin can do on their own. During our ASEAN chairmanship in 2006, the Philippines led in formulating the ASEAN Declaration on the Protection and Promotion of the Rights of Migrant Workers and commencing the establishment of an implementing committee. We also hosted the International Conference on Gender, Migration, and Development in Manila last month. There, the delegates discussed the gender dimension of the social costs and benefits of migration, the upholding of the rights of women migrant workers, and seizing opportunities for enhanced gender equality and benefits of migration for women and their families. And now, we are honored to be the first developing nation and the first Asian country to host the GFMD. For the Philippines, which is at the forefront of the global migration issue, hosting this meeting represents a high point in our efforts to assist migrants through intensified global dialogue and networks for consultation and cooperation. It is good that the leaders of the nations of migrant origin and those nations hosting migrants have come together in our global forum to seek common ground on ways to coordinate assistance to our economies and protection to our workers. We must do so in a way that puts the interests of the poor and dispossessed ahead of the rich and powerful. We must do this in a way that offers a global solution to a global challenge. Indeed, we call for a fundamental global reform. And to that end, we look upon the United Nations for leadership. And may I say, we are grateful we are getting that leadership in the person of Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. We urge all countries which have not yet done so to ratify the International Convention on the Protection of the Rights of All Migrant Workers and Members of Their Families. We are having this global... <laughs> Meanwhile, as we campaign for that, we are having this global forum because coordinated action among nations is the better path than going it alone. It is essential that the major economies of the world along with strong rep representation from emerging economies who are the source of migrant workers, be part of the global consultations to resolve challenges in the global financial system and its impact on migrant workers. And as Secretary General said, 
whether there's a financial crisis or not. Instead of viewing migrants as depersonalized, movable components of globalization, or worse, as inconvenient necessities, we must embrace them as human beings who contribute to our essential well-being in this age of vast movement and change. We must prepare them for and make them full partners in our world of developmental, demographic, and democratic transformation. This must be our commitment in the Global Forum for Migration and Development. We must work together for that transformation to a better world by ensuring that globalization is for everyone and not just for the strong and the fittest. By valuing the real contribution of all workers, migrants, and non-migrants, a world where we're all equally and without discrimination part of a caring and sharing global community. We must work together to protect our migrant workers in times of financial and economic stress as the world is experiencing now, but as Secretary General said, even if it is not a time of financial stress. Our Global Forum offers us a community space to explore those challenges together and to find the best policies, the best practices to meet the challenges of migration in mutually beneficial ways. As Secretary Romulo said, many of your governments support and invest in this practical, consultative approach. We are truly grateful for the contributions you have made and your engagement with the practical preparations of this meeting. Without your belief in this global forum and in our decision this year to examine the migration development complex from the human angle, we could never have nurtured this tender process thus far. You have helped the GFMD come of age. In being here to discuss migration and development, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished delegates, may you get the chance to taste the hospitality that we traditionally extend to friends and family. Many of you may have already experienced with our expatriates abroad. My best wishes to all of you on the proceedings of the Global Forum on Migration and Development. Salamat.